and the limits therein. Uh, my name is Ron Motter, as you've heard Kurt say. I like to pronounce it again since everyone seems to mistake it. I'm from the city and state of Oaxaca. I live in the city and state of Oaxaca, Mexico. I'm not as Mexican as I look. Uh, <coughs> so again, please turn on your smartphone. This, of course, is my smartphone woven for me, woven for me by one of my friendly weaver friends, Veronica Lazo Mendoza. How many people does it take to make a reality? Craig, you were asking if to tell a joke, so this is as close as I can get. How many people? One, but two is always better. Oaxaca that means Waje, a tree native to Mesoamerica. <coughs> That's one of the good. This is uh, one of the examples of when people fail to collaborate, when people uh, forget to tell one person in a city department to another department what they're doing. For example, a, re a restructuring of the city plaza uh, led to the, f the, the falling of several trees in the town Zocalo. This was not the only tree crisis, tree failure in Oaxaca. Here we see uh, the old seminary. And again, the problems of architects not understanding how the tree needs a support. At the art center, the Pachote uh, Cultural Center, again, trees not being uh, cared for. Uh, all of this are not only unsightly, but also very costly errors of failure. Uh, to showcase some of the examples across the Atlantic, uh, here are some examples of failure online and in the world of tourism. Uh, in the city, of state, the city and state of Oaxaca had elections, and one of the results, and I'm sure this doesn't happen here, but the failure of continuity. Here is a Twitter account that has not been updated since the end of November. Why? The new city government came into office December 1st. Here's another example, and this is a current example from Mexico Tourism uh, of how it is promoting its, what I would call routes, what you would call routes, um, is a wonderful presentation of all of the cultural attractions of Mexico, but, but with no way of interaction. No way of making comments, no way of booking tours. I would call this a big failure, a very expensive failure. Another example, when we talk about ecotourism, here we see the EMAC website all about environmental education, developing information, and with one, uh, swell, uh, one swift move, they destroy the entire archive of information about ecotourism. And that was a big failure online. Last month, I was supposed to attend an event in Mazatlan, Mexico, in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, about sustainable tourism. It couldn't even sustain itself. The event did not even take place. <laughs> yeah. Now, there were problems with financing, but no one stepped in. And curiously, this is the year of tourism in Mexico. People who live in glass, glass houses should not throw stones. And, uh, and I have to say that I have had a number of failures myself. Here on Planeta, we established a forum, but it really never took off. People, frankly, couldn't remember their password on a forum. So again, all hail Facebook and Twitter. You know, the people, the, the, the conversations are going out in that route instead. Uh, I'm also the failed author of this book, uh, the first edition of Mexico Adventures in Nature, which never made it into a second edition. <laughs> so. As a roof dog would ask, how do we collaborate? <laughs> Stakeholder model. We need to come to the same table. We need to have some sort of conversation among different stakeholders, people who have different ideas, different agendas, but perhaps we could work toward a common goal. Not necessarily a common end, but we could at least come and talk to each other. Let's be very much aware that it's not all uh, uh, it's, it's not all so simple. What's called the 99-1 principle is one of my favorite examples. Uh, Harold Goodwin on his wonderful forum, Irresponsible Tourism, <laughs> asked, well, why aren't people participating? And I go back to my forum and I say, well, let's look at 90-91. About 1% of people will actually put something there. 90% of people are just lurkers. They're going to read. You know, they're just, and that's fine. We like to go to the internet, or we like to go to network television, et cetera, just to be informed and to be entertained. Uh, 
where we're trying to do is, is work and nudge people to go up a notch. But that also extends the base of our operation. If you want to talk to the unconverted, to the masses, then we have to figure out how to engage people without demanding too much of them. In Oaxaca, here are, here are a couple of examples. And please feel free to copy or adopt them to whatever mechanisms that you find uh, most applicable here. What we've created are photo safaris. If you want to protect the trees in the city, then create opportunities for locals and travelers to come together to take photos with your cell phone calculator and uh, take photos and upload them online. Another, and this is the most recent uh, uh, event back in April, you see that we have lions. Uh, basically asking people to go to an urban park and take photos. Uh, this also has the, advantage, adva this also has the adva added advantage that what we're doing is drinking. Uh, Mexico, as you know, is very famous for tequila, but where, I'm, where I live in Oaxaca, it's also famous for mezcal. Uh, another, another drink made from the agave plant takes 8 to 10 to 15 years to grow. Uh, and basically, we're asking people to drink slowly. Again, drink responsibly is a lot, is much, is, sounds much better than don't drink and drive. <laughs> Here we drink and walk, slowly. Other examples, let's create events. Uh, very, very pleased to have the, the, the city of Cape Town on board for the Responsible Tourism Week. And in Oaxaca, we had a Responsible Tourism Fair. If you want people to adopt and embed responsible tourism in their lives, it has to be made fun, it has to be made applicable, online and on the ground. Again, greetings to, greetings to all of our friends uh, around the world, and uh, Anders and Marcus, uh, thank you for your retweets. So, final comments. Globalize yourself. We're part of a big world here. All of these photos, by the way, are from a market I work with called the Pachote. Uh, in Oaxaca. Gamification. You're calling it incentives. I'm going to call it a game. I told uh, the vendors, if you make a sign for World Environment Day, I'm going to take your photo and I'm going to show your photo to people in South Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting that happen. <laughs> Do what you love. Here's our wonderful friend Lucia who makes wonderful chocolate and also textile dolls. Honor tradition. Here's my good friend Cesar Gauchupin, who makes a wonderful soup called caldo de piedra, stone soup. They take the, this gourd, they put the raw ingredients, fish, shrimp, tomatoes, vegetables, a broth, and from that fire behind him, they'll take the rocks and they'll put it into the gourd and that's how it will be heated. It's an, it's an indigenous microwave. It's been in service for a thousand years. When I go to markets, I like to, uh, I, I, I invariably treat the elders with great respect. And here are my very good friends, Enrique and Sarah Matadamas. Enrique makes candy, sugared candy. It's not organic. It's not good for you. But it's so <laughs> yummy. <clears throat> Enrique has only been doing this for 60 years. His focus is on making it better. Not necessarily making it organic or natural, but making it taste good. And again, in Oaxaca, where we, we often confuse the idea that organic tastes good. Sometimes it does, but not necessarily. Let's value the people who have honored these traditions. Let's walk our talk. You know, it's nice to have a, a conference, but let's get out into the city parks and let's go, again, create events like Photo Safari and do this walk around that, inc that includes people. I love this photo. We see. Uh, uh, Miss Ayala on the, on the far left, uh, the Chinteco vendor of uh, shallots and ginger, along with some tourists, along with my friendly uh, tree activist friend, Francisco, as well as one of the uh, information officers for the city of Oaxaca tourism. Let's learn from the digital natives. Now let's, let's understand there are two, there are some really incredible words here, digital native and digital migrant. Uh, Everyone under 25, raise your hand. We are the migrants, folks. All of, this new all of this technology is new to us. 
We're learning how to adapt it to our lives. But people who are younger accept that as a given. And if we start putting ourselves not just in the, in, in the shoes of a, of a 20 year old backpacker from Texas or from London, but from a 20 year old weaver, they're using these, these technologies now, today. And we in the tourism industry, in the tourism service sector, whatever you'd like to call it, have an incredible opportunity of bringing people together if we're willing to use some of these funky little toys. <laughs> oh, no, tell me it doesn't work now. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know how it works. Okay, and, and Gopi and I have had this wonderful discussion for a couple of weeks. Preach what you practice. Turn it around. It's not just what you practice what you preach, but all of these wonderful people with great sustainable social, environmental uh, projects don't have time to tell us what they're doing. And then they fail. Now, excuse me, I'm, my background is as a journalist, as a photographer. You know, we have to share our stories and get these stories out there. So again, preach what you practice. And in this photo, we see our great friends in Graciela and Rodrigo Martinez, who uh, are from the Ayuk people, who uh, uh, are, are wonderful cooks and do great ceramics. And in Graciela wrote, wrote a beautiful book about her indigenous cuisine in the Ayuk language and in Spanish. And it'd be my dream of dreams to use the wiki to translate that into English. Remember, small is beautiful, but I'd encourage you to think big. This, by the way, is the famous Thule tree, which has the widest girth of any tree in the world. And if you ask me, I do like saying the word girth. All right, here's someone well-dressed. Um, create new events. Here we are at the, at, the, at, the, at the Fair Trade and Chocolate Night at the Instituto Cultural Oaxaca. And I wish Carlos uh, on the left could be uh, watching this right now, but I think it's four in the morning, and I don't, uh, I don't begrudge him if the folks in Oaxaca aren't watching this. Uh, the lady in the middle, that's Angela Mendoza, that's Veronica's mother, uh, and again, one of my favorite uh, Zapotec teachers. Oaxaca has 16 indigenous groups, 100 different dialects. I have had the privilege of learning a few. I always like coming to international events because no one corrects me. <laughs> <laughs> to say good morning in Zapotec, you would say padush, or zakstil, or zauchil. In Mixteco, you would say natan dio. In Ayuk, you would say dios mep, or mai. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, some others. But the idea is we can immerse ourselves in this new language. And again, one of my comments going back to the Portland conference, oh, sure, we should have, an, we should have a common language for tourism. But why shouldn't the common language go to the indigenous people? Why shouldn't we learn what they're saying? And again, going back to the New Zealand example, much of what New Zealand tourism strategy is based on are some Maori concepts. Let's learn what they mean. And can you say kitiakitanga or manakitanga? And what does that mean? Right. This is the poster for the Fair Trade and Chocolate Night. Anhala is one of these wonderful ladies who never takes a poor picture. Incentives, games, let's create contests. I was had the incredible pleasure of working with Kurt on the Indigenous Tourism and Biodiversity website award. Kurt, I really appreciate your help more than you know. Uh, we created this with the United Nations Con uh, Convention on Biological Diversity. Thank you, thank you, Oliver Hillo. And one of our participants here in Oaxaca, Pedro Martinez, a champion cyclist, here uh, seen as we go visit the Stone Soup restaurant. Slow. I think that should be one of the big trends or trending topics. Can we get people just to slow down a bit? I think that, that, uh, that helps our carbon footprint. Now, I'm not going to be the example of it here in South Africa. I'm here for two weeks and in and out. But we can promote that more. Flickr. Everybody uh, should know my favorite social media site is photography-based. Why? You can see and read a photo in any language. It's not text-based. And, uh, and working in Mexico, this has been a great assistance. 
I'd like to finish up with this uh, quote and this beautiful photo from my good friend from Australia, Tom Walter. To transition from business as usual is a matter of will, choice, with the right vision, planning, and preparation, and collaboration around ideas that provide genuine win-win-win outcomes. Folks, we all benefit. Kudos to everyone in these photos. Everyone's listed. And I want to thank you for your attention. Time.